Hey all, Tapes here, back with another Planet Zoo video. This time it's a tutorial, a really short, nice little small one. Uh, hopefully you find this useful. This is basically in response to a bunch of questions that I've had following the release of my seal habitat. So this is all about the little bridge that you see here, the keepers crossing over inside the habitat. The main questions were what I'd used, what pieces, uh, for example, and how I'd been able to get the keepers to path across this when you can kind of see through, uh, see through visibly down to the water below. So we're gonna go through that. I'm gonna show you how I made it. And then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna share the little modular kit that I've made and put up on the workshop uh, alongside this video so that you can make your own. Okay, so I've just jumped over to a little test zoo that I have. This is kind of where I sort of prototype new ideas and stuff. And this was actually the original one of the original designs for it. You'd be interested to see that this actually works. One of the, one of the keys to it was, uh, if I just kind of show you how this is set up, is to consider the, the access area that the keeper can get to, to be entirely different to the access that the animal can get to. So I think there's quite a lot of ideas that you could do with this, but what I have been basically been doing is playing around with the traversable area so in something like a monkey, if we just have a look at this monkey, where he can traverse, you'll see he can't go through that gate for whatever reason, he can't go through that door. Now you can't click on the keeper, but the keeper has a slightly different traversable area and you can play around with that to effectively say that the keeper areas of the habitat are different to the animal areas of the habitat. And obviously it's easier when the animal's bigger um, because as everyone knows, basically the roughly the way that the hitboxes of the uh, the animals and the keepers work is that as long as they can kind of do a 360 rotation, uh, they will be able to, to traverse an area. Now the interesting thing that I kind of came across and that you saw in that bridge is that even when there are gaps, so there's no glass here, this is all just beam pieces, even when there are gaps the keeper will traverse quite happily over the top of it as we see him doing here. So yeah, as I said, I've taken advantage of the fact that he will traverse over that. It's a little bit bumpy in this one. This was my initial prototype. He'll go down and through the door uh, and therefore every bit, all the bits of it are, are kept separate. What I had in the seal habitat obviously, and you'll, you'd have in this case, is that when the animal gets boxed up, they'll return back to this area. Uh, so as long as you've got like a little bit of a holding area, you can move them back over. So I was pretty happy with that initial prototype. Obviously it proved that it didn't really matter what the pieces were. The keepers will traverse over it. I actually thinned out in a few places uh, the gaps between, you know, made larger gaps between the metal beams. And it didn't seem to matter as long as it was kept to sort of fairly close together. The keepers would sometimes just kind of bounce, but mostly just make it over. So then I started using... Uh, what you see in the in the seal beach videos is the aquatic fence piece mainly because it's got this nice kind of almost like cage like structure get gives you that uh, gives you that kind of nice little kind of grated flooring look um, and then yeah just to show that you obviously can use this up at any height as long as the keepers can get onto it it can be absolutely anything we have one coming in now so I just did for this one you know, a, a gate, a pretty simple gate, a fence, the, the bridge going over and then another set of steps. But you could really like inco totally incorporate this into a whole great big building system. Um, you know, as long as you don't, as long as you have somewhere that the, the animals can get put back into the, uh, into un uh, unboxed basically, and then you've got no problem. You can make these pretty complicated. So then I kind of went on a bit from there um to a slightly more like yeah this is one we see that's not perfect that one because he's bumping over the corner a little bit but yeah you can do all sorts of shapes and sizes and uh variations of this i'm pretty sure you could have this work in a way that um yeah they went across the top of a building all sorts of things the key to the key to it and what's really interesting to to, to think is that the pathing dynamics work entirely differently for the keepers inside the habitat so is that a possible indication that we could get you know that working outside the habitat i think probably not 
uh, but it's really interesting to say that that mechanic exists and you do kind of wonder whether they could <laughs> whether you could kind of have a, a a whole zoo that doesn't have um you know pass for keepers and things so yeah last bit last little thing i did oh there was one more yeah just to show you can have this kind of down at um kind of down at water level as well it doesn't really matter as, long, as i said as long as they've got a way on and off a bit um, and that the gaps are wide enough that's the key is that the gap that they can traverse is actually wide enough and then you've got to kind of mitigate the size of the animal with the size of the the keeper so if you had an infant the infant will probably be able to come back over that if it was a small animal so yeah last thing i thought i'd do just to kind of make it um a bit more kind of useful for everybody is just to put a little kit together as i said this is pretty easy this is going to go up on the workshop and the way you use this i've, I've set out all the corners and the pieces uh, you know kind of railings going up that way and, and down etc and basically all you need to do is kind of grab the grab the, the the mud pillar of the piece you want and duplicate that around so there's me extending a corner etc uh, do the same with anything that's going up you can't rotate these they have to kind of end up in the same orientation that's why i've given you all these different corners and shapes and sizes and stuff some little instructions um yeah and then obviously once you've done with that you just take the mud pillar away once you've got it all kind of set up take the mud pillar away and you should be all good anyway hope you found that useful guys really short one as i said uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff it's very useful for me and i shall catch you guys on the next one take it easy